Hello, this is Vinu from Telestax with a screencast on Telescale SS7 test tools. If you or your organization is looking for a powerful SS7 test tool, then you must check out this video. The Telescale SS7 simulator comes bundled within the Telescale JS7 stack. Telescale JS7 stack is an open source Java based software implementation of the SS7 protocol stack and it's fully supported by Telestacks. In addition to its technical excellence, the Telescale JS7 stack offers great features for easy management, monitoring, and testing. One of the less spoken about but very useful feature is the SS7 simulator that comes with it. Telescale SS7 Simulator is a powerful testing tool that will enable you to test and understand the functionality of the SS7 stack. You can use it to study and explore the stack or for testing it. This video is a quick walkthrough on what you can achieve with the simulator and how to use it effectively. So we're going to learn how to install the simulator run the simulator locally or remotely, configure it, and execute test cases. Installing the Telescale SS7 simulator is very simple and easy. Like I said before, the Telescale SS7 simulator module is included in the Telescale JS7 binary. So all you need to do is download the JS7 binary and extract the contents. You will find five subdirectories, one of them being the SS7 folder, inside which the simulator module is present. So, that is how you get a working installation of the Telescale SS7 simulator. You can use the simulator with the Telescale JS7 stack or as a standalone SS7 test tool installed on any machine without any dependency on JBoss, Telescale, JSLE, or any other container. In any case, you must have a successful installation of JDK 1.7 on your machine. This video will demonstrate using it with the Telescale JS7 stack. Now that you have the simulator installed, let's get on to running the simulator. The simulator is very flexible and easy to run. You can run several instances in a single machine with each instance having its own configuration. You must remember to provide a unique name for every running instance. This name is referred to as the host name. The configuration options of that instance are saved into an XML file named hostname underscore simulator dot XML. You can run the simulator locally or remotely. So let's see how it is done. To run a simulator locally in your machine, you must first change your working directory to the bin folder in the simulator's installation directory. Make sure this start script is executable and then run the script. If you wish to pass the hostname as a parameter, you can do so while issuing the command. So, here I'll have A1 as the name of the simulator instance that I'm about to launch. So I'll leave A1 as the host name, keep the option create a local test host selected and click on the start button. So now I have a simulator instance launched locally where I can configure the different layers to suit my requirements and execute different test cases. The simulator can also be run remotely using RMI and HTML adapters. But before launching the simulator remotely, you must first run a tester host in the host machine. So you must have the simulator installed locally in the host machine and change the working directory to the bin folder. Make sure the start script is executable and then run the script. The parameter name defines the name of the simulator instance running in the host machine.
You can use a RMI connector or HTTP connector or both simultaneously. In this case, I have defined the port 8001 as listening for HTTP requests and the port 9999 as listening for RMI requests. Now when I run the script, this will launch a tester host in the host machine. When the tester host is running in the host machine, you can now run the simulator test remotely from any machine which has the simulator installed. And for managing the simulator remotely, you can either use the RMI interface or HTML interface. We'll look at the procedure for both now. The best client for managing the simulator via the RMI interface is the graphical interface of the simulator. It can be launched in the same way as launching the simulator locally. Specify the hostname of the simulator instance that you are connecting to. In this case, it's A1 Core. And choose the option Connect to the existing tester host via JMX. Replace local host with the IP address of the machine where you have the simulator instance running. And also specify the RMI port. I'll leave it here as 9999. Click on the Start button. So now I've established a connection to the simulator running in the remote machine. The rest of the management is similar to managing the simulator instance locally. The simulator can be managed remotely using HTML interface as well. But HTML management is less convenient than RMI management. However, it can be used if you're behind a proxy or in other cases where RMI is not acceptable. For configuring the parameters and running the test, you can use any HTML browser. In the URL field of the browser, type the IP address of the machine where you have the simulator running and specify the port. The web page will display all the beans. Tester host is the main MB. Here you can select the mode for testing. You can start or stop a test and you can quit a tester host. You can use the other beans for setting different options for layers and choose the test tasks that you would like to execute. You must configure all relevant layers and the testing task before you can run a test with a simulator. You can choose from the layers as required to make sure that the corresponding lower layers are configured appropriately. We will now see how to configure the simulator using the graphical interface. Select the layer you wish to configure and enter the values for all the parameters as required. You can choose to pre-populate with default values if that suits you. The SCCP layer supports message processing in two modes, route on DPC and SSN mode, route on global title mode. For both the modes, you must specify these mandatory parameters. For the route on global title mode, you must also specify the extra options. If the route on global title mode is used, two rules for routing are created when the SCCP layer is started. All remotely originated messages are routed to a local user. All locally originated messages are routed to a remote user. The SCCP layer provides called party address and calling party address for upper layers and test cases. There are six test cases available with the Telescale SS7 simulator. As an example, let's take the USSD client test case and execute it. Choose the testing task USSD test client and configure this layer. The USSD client can run in two modes, manual or auto sending process unstructured SS request. If you choose the auto mode, you must specify the string for auto sending process unstructured SS request and the count of maximum active map dialogs. The default value is 10. 
Before you start testing, configure the values for MSISDN, data coding scheme, and the alerting pattern values. Now click the run test button to start the test case. Thank you for your time. For all sales related inquiries, send an email to sales at